Okay, guys, we're live. Um, welcome. It's yep. uh, me and uh, Chris Hex uh, in the screen over there. Um, where are you now? Ooh, right now I am in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Okay, I'm in Belleville, um, and uh, that's you know a couple of hours from Toronto. I guess is probably the the major city that people know. Um, so, uh, anyways, we're we're here because uh, tonight uh, I'm going to be launching um, one of our uh, our, our newest uh, video uh, for for our new single, which is the single came out a few weeks ago, um, but uh, the video is just coming out now. And uh, yeah, we I don't know, Chris and I uh, have have corresponded over the years, and always um, you know. I, we always got along. Uh, it seemed like I should do some sort of uh, PR thing for this this release, but I, I didn't really want to kind of. I just wanted to keep it simple because uh, we, we were still sort of in the middle of making a record, so you know it it didn't it seemed felt weird to kind of go on a, some PR blitz or something. But uh, but yeah, so so Chris and I are just gonna have a chat and uh, yeah. He'll, he'll ask me questions, I'll, I'll uh, ask him questions, and there we go. All right. Yeah, well, I know you and I, Ian, um, we've been talking for a long time, and I've talked to a lot of musicians, but none of them have stayed in closest contact with you, and um, some of them kind of fade out, or they ghost, and so to find somebody who actually talks to me, not... <laughs> <laughs> small <Okay>. talk <laughs> uh, i mean i understand if you're just not that interested or whatever i get it but it's nice to meet a musician who actually wants to talk with me and so not to mention it's for all the thing about glam and goth it was nice to meet somebody who actually knows glam rock it's not just oh yeah i wear makeup no he actually knows that <laughs> yeah. well that's what yeah we, yeah the whole question was where are we are we doing makeup tonight and i i wound up doing it because it's just sort of automatic like i mean you told me you weren't you weren't able to or you weren't going to bother um but uh but then i i was uh yeah it was just i think in my mind i was like okay if he says he's going to then then i have to uh but you know if if he says he's he's not going to then i'll i'll just decide and well, it's just sort of automatic you know um, yeah, and to be fair, you're also a performer, so I expect it when it, it, it comes with the stage presence. Um, me, I normally do wear makeup. The good thing with me, though, is that there's enough pictures of me floating around wearing makeup that it's not that bad. All you have to do is type in Chris Hex. There's an old, there's a picture of me floating around somewhere with a death hawk or whatever, so go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you've been, I, I've seen you. Uh seen you in a bunch of uh, goth memes i feel like uh it was uh, your image uh became yeah kind I, of iconic I wasn't actually at a different aware point. of yeah. those until somebody told was, me <laughs> someone put you in one like weird like goth meme and that was uh i was like oh that's chris <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah and i was glad they weren't it wasn't anything mean or anything actually they were a lot of them were really funny and surprisingly accurate as to how i am in real life so that was refreshing yeah like the whole nervous laughter thing and me and girls i'm like yeah that's me socially awkward as hell yeah it's a lot of people don't know that i'm on the autism spectrum so that's a lot of why my behavior is the way it is <laughs> yeah i well yeah. I, I yeah i can relate um but sort of most of my family i feel like is, is on that uh, somewhere uh yeah most people are to some degree it just when it starts registering uh, sorry a uh, long day that it, it kind of becomes a thing because then some people think you're just making it up. I'm like, no, if it affects you enough in your day-to-day -day life that you have the need to mention it, there's an official diagnosis. That's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. I, I well, I, I, yeah, I never prefer to fly under the radar. I'd never really uh, sought out a kind of a diagnosis or anything like that. But. No, it's, with me, it was unavoidable because there was just too many mishaps and the club uh, yeah. scene talking about music talking to bands he's like well he words things kind of funny or i've been around him and he's a nice guy but he acts a little strange i'm like yeah i'm not screwing with you that's i'm on, I'm on that part of the spectrum mm. yeah I, sometimes i don't even know i'm doing it yeah well it, it happens but but you know we we have these uh fortunately we have these social lubricants to uh you know just just help us uh relax and uh, <laughs> converse, converse <laughs> yes. like normal people ideally 
Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, hey, shout out to Eva Red in the chat. Uh, hi, nice, nice, and hi Ryan as well. Uh, Ryan, thanks, thanks hey, for guys. thanks for buying yeah. the CD. Uh, or uh, download recently, and uh, Eva uh, Eva actually makes great music. Uh, actually, Eva, I got to know through. Um, do you know uh, Ariel Maniki? That name sounds very familiar. I've met so many people over the years. Some of them I haven't had the pleasure of meeting in person yet. Maybe yeah. Someday. Yeah, he's uh, so so. Ariel uh, is uh, he has a goth band in, in Costa Rica, and he reached out to me um, years ago. Uh, to work on a track with him, and and uh, I I'd, I'd never heard of him before, and and uh, but now he's he's all over the place. He's uh, he's doing great now. Um, but we uh, it was a good track, so I wound up doing it, and and uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm yeah, pretty, it's pretty it proud of nice it. Hearing, it is nice day. hearing music in the areas people normally don't think about. Like I know there's goth bands from Puerto Rico now, which to me is pretty awesome, particularly in light of everything that that they've been through over there, all the storms. So. That's nothing short of amazing. Um, I found out Hawaii has a pretty good goth scene. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, honestly, one of my favorite bands uh, around right now is um, Escarlatina Obsessiva. Oh, uh, yeah, I love them. Yeah, and they're, they're in Brazil. And, and it's weird because they're kind of... Um, they're not even in really. I mean, I guess they, I guess they have a sort of a scene where they are, but they're in a very small uh, kind of rural area, as I understand it. And uh, you know, they, um, yeah. Well, they... that tends to spawn the best bands. Most of the bands I've even read, like even from the Cure of all things, they tend to come from small, depressing towns where there's not much going for them. There's really no hope of a future, but somehow a group of people all meet in those areas and they make music and they think, well. It's it could it's not going to be anything worse. Might as well just go for it. And the music ends up being awesome because they're writing about things they know, which their day to day life experience sometimes sucks. So, for some strange reason, that makes for excellent music. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I mean, I feel like there's two ways like like that can go, like that can happen. Like there's there's the people who, you know, everyone can relate to 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 uh, growing up in a small town and wanting to leave. Um, yeah. Even people who grew up in a big town uh, can relate to that because everybody, when they're growing up, wants to leave their parents, right? So yeah. um, so, so it's re it's a relatable feeling, you know, of just like, oh, I got to get out and, and uh, get on to better things. Yeah. But then there's the other way that I think this can happen, which I think is actually more um, where Escarlatina Obsessive are, are at is their they've like kind of created their own reality where they, they've retreated from the the urban area to to set up their own like well not commune or whatever but they've uh like bunker you could call it you know like they're they've they're yeah. totally off grid those guys and uh and it's it's awesome um and and yeah i feel like like some artists you know that that makes a lot of sense <laughs> as well yeah it really, it really does it actually it's funny um thinking of music and musicians um Larry Rainwater of the band X Photo, um, when, before he moved from California, actually told me a similar story whenever he was growing up. And I forget the exact name of the town he grew up in. Um, he said, basically, yeah, the area that he grew up in, there was nobody that really wanted to play the kind of music he was into. Like he loved punk rock because that was the hardcore scene he grew up in the 80s. But there was also the new wave side of things and what's now called positive punk, post punk goth, whatever you want to yeah, call it. Yeah. And he said, literally, he said, well, I couldn't find anyone to teach to teach me stuff. So I taught myself and I couldn't find anyone else that played the sort of music I wanted. So I played it myself. And he recorded everything, vocals, guitar, drum machine. And he started shopping around his tapes until he found other people who wanted to do the same thing. And he just went from there. But it was literally him making his own world and his own signature style of music because he didn't have any choice. He said, well, let's do that or nothing. You just yeah. sit in your room. Like, hey, what could have been? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, um, well, <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, well, we. I started making music because you know we uh, we met. Um, I, I was lucky enough to. Uh, well, I mean, all my life I was making music, but I, I wound up in school for it. Uh, you know, at Queens, and and that was where I met. Um, the other guys that I was working with initially, which is which is how this you know project got uh, got started, and um, you know, 
that's what sort of gave me the, the encouragement, I guess, to, to go out and do it. But uh, yeah, anyways. Yeah, and it's um, when I first heard your music, I'm like, wow, this is great. This is like a mix of like the cure and the beauty of Gemini with a bit of T Rex. You know, I don't see that sort of thing. Yeah. And this was after the initial death rock explosion in the 2000s. So I'm like, which a lot of those bands are great. It produced some really good bands like All Gone Dead, who I adore, or like Bloody Dead and Sexy from the I think were like late 90s and they're still around. And then suddenly there's Ian. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is different. It doesn't sound like the other bands. It's something different. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, I mean, I sort of consider us like a like a multi genre project, if that makes sense. Like we like we don't yeah. really. Like I, I'm just trying to write, and um, I don't really, I don't really believe in formulas. I don't really, you know. In, in fact, I, in fact, I hate it. Um, you know, I, I'm almost like obsessive about not trying to repeat, you know, a sound, and uh, and so, uh, which which is a, another thing that kind of makes me think. Okay, this, this project probably does have an end date like we'll, we'll probably you know I'll, yeah. I'll exhaust all the possibilities and then it'll be it'll be done maybe but um but yeah um like like we just started off and um you know and then people told us that it was kind of goth and, and and then i like i sort of recognized that i was like okay that that is probably right um and uh so then i started consciously kind of like maybe catering towards that a bit but uh because i realized that okay that's probably our audience and, um but uh but yeah and it, like it's funny um because i you know we're independent right so uh so one of my big activities over the years has been trying to like you know build our list of like djs and stuff and people who you know kind of support uh what we do and um yeah. I mean, that's like, um, but the thing about DJs is a lot of them are, are, are way more focused than, than we are. So I, so I do wind up having conversations where, you know, somebody will really like one thing and then I'll, I'll be sending them another thing and it'll be like, okay, just got to warn you, this, this, is not, this isn't like the, this isn't, you know, for the dance floor exactly, uh, you know, yeah. uh, but maybe and the next one will be so, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and it's that's the thing is too, and there's been misconceptions of certain DJs um, thinking they only play dance material. That's all they like. It's said, no, 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 that's not. Now there are DJs like that. I've met those too, but the true DJs, as far as goth, death rock, a lot of us come from the punk rock background, which is why we're not entirely focused on dance. Yeah, you want a dance DJ? There's half a dozen clubs per city that have somebody who does nothing but dance. That's all they ever do. There's like crossover with the electro and some of the even EDM scenes, even though I hate EDM with a passion because it's douchebag music. And um, I, I don't mind some of it, but but <laughs> yeah, I know it's, I've run I've run into some really nice EDM DJs and some who are just like pop color douchebag as we call it in the U.S. Right. Um, okay. I mean bro, the bro type, which is a total turn off for me. And um, but like the true rock DJs. Um, Kind of like the, uh, I think Oliver Shepard referred one of the death parties referred to as like the John Peel type, which is more my speed. Yeah. With um, where I'll play some of the danceable stuff if it's a night where it's focused on getting people out and drinking and dancing, and making money for the club, having a good time. I'll play a lot of the danceable stuff, and as will a lot of the other DJs in Texas, like Eli Bats, the same way. But we'll also play stuff that you don't dance to, just to teach you to appreciate the music. Right. Like the, fo the focus is there to support the band. If you want to dance, great. That makes money for the bar. It's important. So they'll keep letting you do your night there. And that just, that's a reality. It's, it's part of the business thing. And nobody wants to talk about that. Yeah, it is a business to some extent because otherwise you're DJing from your room and not a club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but but then I, actually, I mean, you know, that's that's a lot of DJing now, right? I mean, we we just had the with the pandemic, especially, you know, it was like 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 everyone became a DJ. I I became a DJ, you know, for crying out loud, and uh, it, you know, it, it and that is that is valid because it's nice. I mean, because. Well, I think it's also too. It makes a lot of sense with the whole shift away from people are not like listening to albums uh, as much as they used to, right? They, um, they. So if they're not listening to albums, well, then what makes sense? Well, if you have someone 
uh, curating a uh, a DJ stream, like making you know something that flows, that you that you are just listening to in your room. You don't have to dance to, you know. Then then that's yeah. uh, that's a really cool you know way that a DJ can can help. But I mean, the project uh, like we always had uh, because because it really began with this collaboration between me and and Carl um, and Carl. Uh, was really on the electronic side so he really like it was this kind of marriage between like you know uh more like goth like rock and then this industrial mm -hmm. kind of uh dance thing that he had and um yeah so so uh so so we had like sort of both those uh the sides and that's what that's what really like kind of defined uh, you know a lot of it uh, especially in the beginning yeah, and it's um, it kind of reminds me like what how your attitude toward it reminds me of bands like Etsy. You know, that's a that's a good example. The first time I ever listened to them, I, I don't was know told that. they were what okay. Um, I was told about the band um, that they were a death rock band. I listened to it, and okay. they had more of an artistic bent. And um, I could definitely see the death rock. So they've been on the Artifact Records uh, comp and everything. But oh, okay. Having talked to him, it's something totally different. It's um, it's almost reminds me of a band like a more punky version of a, of a band like Cinema Strange, and um, which it's it's not trying to do this formulaic thing. It's the music goes where it goes. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's a it's well, it's about the writing ultimately, and and yeah, like I I don't, um, but I've I, like honestly I. If there's one way that I've shifted a bit over the years, I feel like what like when we did that um, first album, I was really um, I really thought of myself like way more as a musician, and uh, you know I mean obviously I'm a musician, but I was thinking of myself more. I was I was working from the music, and um, you know the uh, the lyrics. I mean we're we're never just just filler or anything, but it, it was it was building up from the music and. And uh, and so because I was building from the music, I think I was I was actually um, I was really experimenting a lot with the music, and and I just wanted to see like okay, can we do a song in like seven eight? Can we do a song? You know, uh, can I make this song groove go for like three minutes before we get to the chorus? You know, can we uh, can we do yeah, can we do stuff like that? Things. Right? Yeah. And. Uh, and yeah, so uh, but now like like uh, yeah, I I actually think of myself like just more of a of a writer. I've been really like I've had a real shift over the last few years where I've been really just very very like like lyrics focused. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that because uh, everyone has a good dance floor song. But like I said, but at the same time, it's. For those of us who are really into it, the kid who grew up in the room listening to music, we do listen to the lyrics. Sometimes memorize them by heart. So people mm -hmm. even get them tattooed on themselves. Yeah. Which is a hell of a commitment. You don't have to do that, but I, I will say that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. No, it's really, I mean, when it's really cool when you uh, see that, I mean, and that is one of the things like with, with social media now, like when when something does hit hit someone, like every once in a while, you'll get these little, you know, even a band as as sort of as small as us, you know, in the scheme of things, uh, like we do get these every once in a while. Like I'll see, like oh wow, like someone took a verse from our song and like translated it into uh, Spanish and posted it on Instagram. That's really cool. You know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, things, things like that. Right. It's really, um, yeah, it's, it's really cool when you, when you, when you touch people like that. Yeah. It's kind of like an interview I had years ago with, um, Michael Rowland, a destructive member. He, um, he said, he said he never thought like he'd seen where, kids on the other side of the world are having making band patches with his band's name on it it's people he's never even met so it's like mm. oh wow that's really like us so, yeah the love is there and it's the kids are the ones that are pouring it out they do say it from the older crowd but the youth is really the key it always has been yeah but some of the old crowd they just get burnt out they don't listen anymore or maybe the spirit's there the body's not willing you know just whatever it be and it's not it's not an old joke it's just you're, no you're it's true yeah people do stop going out as much and you know 
yeah, and yeah. it's no, it's nobody's fault. We you know we had a major pandemic. So that's I don't blame anybody for that. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, no, no. Speaking of pandemics and people not going out, um, I know uh, I've, I've actually been kind of amazed to see all the things that have cropped up. Actually, um, for those who don't know, and we'll segue into this here, and we'll talk about it too long, but just to, um, for those who don't know, I was in prison for three and a half years for something I didn't do. I was exonerated, and I actually stayed in touch with some of the bands and DJs and including listening to Double Island and like Art Off Records comps and all that, listen to bands like Spectres and uh, Gold was a really good one. And it's even though the pandemic sucked, it was horrible to see these people stuck inside, people losing their minds, but it really did spawn a lot of creativity. I mean, some of the music I heard coming out during the pandemic, despite how much it sucked for the bands not being able to tour, some of it was better than some of the stuff they released while on tour. Yeah, it was, um, I mean, well, I, unfortunately that wasn't my experience. It was kind of a bad time, uh, you know, for, for us, uh, to be honest, cause we, we did this, like, we did this tour in, in 2019 and it was like a huge effort. Like it was, it was really rewarding at the same time, but it was, um, you know, it was a huge effort and we, we came back just exhausted, but it felt like, okay, we've accomplished something. We've made that like, you know, we, and there were some great shows. There was, uh, I mean, we did this, uh, this festival in Seattle, which was the reason the whole thing happened in the first place. Cause we got invited to do that. And, mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, once it, uh, you know, transpired that that was happening, then, then we, uh, we did that um and thought okay well we've got we've got to get the visa for this so let's let's do uh let's do more um but then by the time um it was done we were just so burnt out and uh you know we didn't even do another gig the rest of 2019 um and we weren't even looking for one because we were just like oh my god <laughs> let's just take a rest you know um yeah. and uh and yeah so so then when everything shut down, it was like, it was honestly just so depressing because so, you know, we'd made this effort and, and made all these inroads into the U S and then it's like all like a few bunch of the places we play are going out of business because that was the case everywhere. And, uh, you know, there's no prospect of, the borders are closed. There's no prospect of going back, you know, to any of those places and, you know, having better shows. And, and it was just like, Oh my God. Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And you know, I was getting letters while still inside while the appeals thing was going through before I ended up winning and about what was going on with the scene. And one of the things I heard the most from bands and everyone else was about all the difficulties either getting into the U.S., leaving the U.S. for shows, booking venues, because there really wasn't much you could do. And a few of the venues you had to try to take a gamble on, it's like, well, is it actually going to see it through to the day of the actual show? Because what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that was, that, was, that was the thing, too. Like, I still haven't, uh, you know, since things reopened, uh, we, we still haven't done a gig. Uh, I've done, like, one live uh, DJ set somewhere, and, and that was cool. That was, that was a ton of fun. It was great to be out again. But there was definitely a period where, um, you know, yeah, things were happening, but, but it felt like, oh, geez, like, is there even any point in planning when it can all just sort of be yanked away again, um, you know? So, uh, so, yeah, that was very frustrating, and... Um, and yeah, like, like near the beginning of this, um, you know, near the beginning of the shutdown, um, I, I kind of, you know, got over some of these, you know, this, this depression and, and I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's get, you know, we'll just get in the studio. We'll get, we'll get working on stuff. And, um, yeah, honestly it didn't go well. <laughs> It was, uh, there was, uh, you know, I, like, I, I can't really talk about it, but there, a lot about it, but there was some stuff that happened and eventually that, but like, um, the partnership, uh, that, that formed this, this project, uh, between, between Carl and myself was, was, was just, uh, was just done. And, uh, I actually really didn't know, um, 
I didn't even say anything about it on social media at the time because I'd like I'm, I'm I'm pretty private, really. Um, and I just, I just, uh, I honestly didn't know. Like, okay, is there going to be, you know, is is this it, right? Um, and um, but over time, like I I thought like it's like any time I think you, you you go through these sort of intense emotions, it it like it stirs other stuff up, and then it's like then you want to write. And then, and then, so eventually, like stuff started happening, but it wasn't until, uh, and then when I started demoing some stuff, but I'm not really, like, I'm not really a producer, right? Like, I'm, a, I'm more of a songwriter, and, yeah. um, and I, I, like, I produce my, my demos and stuff, but they're, but they're not very good, and I, I I'm actually like, I, I, I just don't have time to like try to learn how to mix properly and stuff like that, right? So. So I've always worked with with people like on that end of it, and uh, and it had always been Carl. Carl had been my my, my you know go to guy and very 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 close friend. Um, but uh, but yeah, it wasn't until like uh, Di Alger. Do you know him? Are you familiar with his music? He's a Toronto based. He's more on the industrial side of things. I don't think he's like he's probably less up your alley than. Than, um, uh, I actually enjoy old school industrial. I had a um, oh, okay. He, he's yeah, good. I, I mean, I, you know, yeah, he's, it's, um, yeah, early industrial and some of the mid period stuff. Actually, there's a lot of crossover with the goth and the death rock scenes because, um, like, if you look at somebody like uh, Shane Adelaide, I think it's how you pronounce his last name in LA, he was involved with Release the Bats. He was a regular DJ at Dos Bunker, the big industrial club. So there is crossover. Yeah. No, anyways, um, yeah, no, no, no Di Alger is, is, is great, actually. He just, he, he, he put out an album quite recently that was, um, was really good. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, he, he connected me with, um, with this, uh, with this new producer who was, um, it was interesting because I sort of got him, like, just, he was, um, just sort of restarting his kind of music career in a, in a way because he, he'd like, he was one of these, these people who he, he he'd you know been very active in his in his 20s and then and kind of ha had to decided he had to you know just focus on his family you know first and then and then now yeah. that the now that the kids uh, grown up he was kind of like all right it's time to time to do this again and uh, and uh, and yeah so I, I he he just yeah his name's Sean um, he goes by uh, live evil productions um, Sean Beasley and uh yeah we just so we just connected and uh it's like i don't really i and i think maybe because of some of this like like introversion like autism spectrum stuff we were talking about yeah. before like mm -hmm. i don't really um i almost have to like make friends with someone before i can work with them really so it's a kind of a slow process well, and i, I keep... it's easier that way it's not just strictly a business arrangement i mean some people prefer that um i call it the david bowie syndrome i act like he's a friend but it's really it's all business to cut you loose but yeah um, yeah not really my thing obviously not yours it's it's just easier that way because you're not always gonna be able to sit there in awkward silence once you've done something on a project it's nice to be able to just talk yeah you yeah, know it's really it's really important and i think also just just at the level we're we're at you know it's like it, it's got to be I mean, bottom line is, is in this scene, you, you can't really pay people like what they're worth. It's like there has to be a labor yeah, of love yeah. from from both parties, you know. Um, so. Uh, so, yeah, it's always bothered me a bit, but it is what it is. Yeah, so. no, that's the situation. So, like, I mean, I mean, Sky, the guitarist, I've known him for years. He's from the same hometown as I am. Ben, uh, you know, I was uh, we we connected. Geez, like uh Tw more than 20 years ago and uh you know um and then yeah so don't know sean is you know is uh, uh the new producer and becoming a good friend so uh so you know yeah, yeah I, I, it's more like a just a sort of a tight circle i guess yeah it's i understand it's the same thing for me in um the south there are people that i know in houston um, one of them is a friend of mine by the name of Shane Howard, aka Shane Black, who's been doing industrial DJ stuff. He's working with Wax Tracks, and um, and um, I turned to him to learn how to do anything that DJing that I don't know, which is a lot of things because I'm I've never pretended to be a major club DJ. I just kind of got lucky, and um, 
but he and I hang out in our spare time and he tells me stories about bands and teaches me little tricks and everything. And there's other people nice. I know from the punk scene in Houston who produce their own records. And they were, they've been doing this since they were teenagers. Well, they had no idea what they're doing, but yet somehow here they are and they're scene legends. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty awesome, actually. Uh, Talk about earning the stripes. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I, I mean, I think everybody's sort of self-taught in, in this uh, sort of thing anyways, you know. Um, yeah, because I mean, it's not like you can go to school. You can go, you can go for audio engineering, but at the same time, you're probably still working retail or, yeah. you know, waiting tables somewhere while you're going through audio engineering. That's if you even want to stick with it. So it's you just kind of, but it's usually easier to just learn as you go with all the road bumps that happen along the way. Yeah. So um, I don't know. So. I, you, you've heard the new, uh, I guess you've heard the new music. I don't know, what, how, how's, what, what's your... I actually, re I actually really loved it. Usually what I'll do when it comes to new music is I'll have it blasting at home in my car, uh, maybe on breaks at work or anything, so I can really kind of let it set in because it's, that way my thought processes are rolling to see what I think. And um, it's probably one of the best new songs I've heard in a while. Cause I've run through the usual band. Like I listen to actors from Vancouver a lot. They're excellent. And I'll listen to some of the stuff like Temple of Angels who I really enjoy. I think they're from Austin. I don't remember quite sure. Okay. Uh, Crew Lies, but. Oh, I, I like them. I like uh, Crew Lies. I like what I've yeah, heard of them. Yeah. They're really good. They kind of straddle that fine line between post-punk, if you will, and kind of a darker indie very stylish but not hipsterish it's it's the real thing <laughs> well and the guy can sing too you know and um like yeah they, they, i don't know much about them but they're on my list they're kind of like i've heard a couple of things i'm like yes got to check them out more like i i really like them um but yeah no it was so um yeah i don't know i i guess we could uh talk about the video I, I i mean like so we did the we did the dead is better video and like that was which is like 10 years ago now which is uh which is crazy yeah, yeah um, i remember watching it a couple times just because i enjoyed how it was shot so the dead is better video or this one or or that uh, is better oh yeah yeah well it's it's no it's it's terrific and that was um that was just an amazing opportunity that that kind of fell into my lap and it it sort of fell into my lap like before there was even any uh project uh you know happening like we had uh you know we had barely started at that point and then uh but we had i mean and again, really, there I, I have to give a lot of credit to Carl because uh, you know he was basically he had the tools to sort of bring uh, us to you know a, a professional level, like in terms of the sound, really quickly. And uh, and so we we made this when when it was basically there was like almost almost nothing behind it at that point and then it was like oh wait a second uh so so i guess now we have to do a lot more and uh and yeah so yeah. <laughs> it's like can't stop now yeah You're <laughs> so um so yeah basically uh anyways um when i was uh c trying to come up with a uh like a, a cover image for the new uh for the new track i i just thought well because it's all there's a real link actually between this this track like lyrically and and dead is better because it's it's using it's going to like burial as a metaphor and and you know uh, how you know things that are buried and you know dead and gone should you know it, it, <laughs> It's like they're kind of essentially saying the same thing. That it's, that it's best not to dig up the past uh, too much, but uh, but with a slightly different take on it. Um, but uh, but yeah. So that so uh, you know when I was going for a cover image, I was just like the image of myself in the video, just just walking away with a shovel, just kind of hit me. It was like okay, there there we go. There's the you know there's the 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 visual like metaphor you need uh you know he he has the shovel but he's just kind of walking off right and um and then so there came um basically a point where uh 
you know, we were we were coming up with ideas for the for the video, and it was like essentially like okay, let's just we'll, we'll just we'll just bring the character back, and uh, and uh, yeah, so so I was I was really lucky. I, uh, I connected with um, you know uh, a local uh, local guy who wanted to uh, to make a film and. Uh, it, you know, he, he wanted to collaborate on a music video, and and we we got uh, we got him, uh, his name's uh, uh, Victor um, Vinayak. Um, he, uh, he is actually he's from India. He's only been in Canada for like a little more than a year, I think. And and uh, but he, oh uh, well, he's, he's, yeah, he's, no, he's yeah, he's doing terrifically well. Uh, you know, he's here as a student right now, but hoping to stay permanently and. Uh, yeah, really, really nice guy, really terrific, and uh, hey, you know, and immigrant he, stream, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and no, and he just wanted to, uh, like, you know, he, he just wanted to connect with people and work in creative projects because he wasn't really like this is. I'm in a small kind of uh, town here. It's uh, you know, it's it's like fifty thousand people or something, so it's it's, it's quite small. Um, and he just wasn't finding people like creative people. He could kind of connect with here um but then it was uh, it was really cool we we also found this uh, uh, incredible makeup artist who's who's not responsible for the way i look tonight by the way but uh, she uh, yeah but yeah no she, she's she's way better than that but um but yeah she um anyway she was terrific as well and uh and then and then we got a little little extra help from a guy um, in Mexico, um, Orlando, who uh, was was recommended to me because we put it together as like a lyric video. So he was recommended for like doing the um, you know title animations and that sort of thing. And uh, he was really terrific too. So uh, so it, it's I mean it's remarkable what, you know these days what you can. I don't know. I mean, we we've been just been. It's crazy to me that we've been so lucky. You know, three times to to uh, to connect with with filmmakers now, and I really uh, I really sort of value that. You know. Um, well, but, it's one thing I'm noticing too that some of the filmmakers that are coming up, there's actually a pretty fair amount of them that come out of the punk and the god scenes, and they they don't advertise it at first, but when you really start talking to them, when you really get them to open up, and music always comes up or mm. visual references or just whatever and more often than not i see a lot of them come from the underground music scenes because that's where they're getting their cues from those of us who come from those scenes can recognize that people on the outside will is like there seems to be this kind of dark aesthetic or like this music that sounds like oh it sounds like something from like the darker side of a john hughes movie or something yeah <laughs> like, i'm like okay you're getting warmer you're almost there <laughs> so to recognize influences yeah so yeah well it's good i don't know um it's funny yeah i'm just recalling like way way back in time we were t I, I think we had this uh this is sort of a the the fulfillment of something like we were talking about way back when we were we were talking in 2014 um because yes. like yeah i i don't know well we were just having one of those like kind of like bitchy sort of uh conversations i think about about bad music and, and, uh, and, and there, was, like, there was a lot of that time that was not a good year yeah and and, and uh <laughs> we were like okay we gotta go online we gotta like do a youtube thing or like where we just like review stuff and but honestly now i i wouldn't do that now because well i don't know maybe i should but it's just i don't know people are afraid like it's not like um you know if we were in hip-hop or something we would we would uh we would be writing songs about how terrible the other bands were <laughs> and, <No>. uh, you know, <laughs> and and it would be you know it would be it would be self promo for for both of us but now i you know i yeah yeah there's a lot of terrible bands out there but i'm not gonna start uh, naming them because because you know uh, a lot of people like those terrible bands and um, <laughs> yeah and i mean there's there's a big difference between terrible and like terrible but guilty pleasure like you can mm -hmm. enjoy them sometimes because it is that bad and there's some that like as soon as their songs kick in i'm like i can't do it i've listened to an album or two just trying so hard to be fair and i just can't do it yeah <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot of great there's a lot of great music out, out now too though and I, so I don't want to be negative i don't want to be negative but there's there's yeah. a, there's i guess it's not that it's more like there's there's a lot of good um bands out there that like it would be cool to hear them 
cut loose a bit more just like you know get out of that narrow lane maybe because i don't know but i think that's just my uh i think it's just my perspective maybe i don't know and, well and i'm part not of it too, i know it's probably peer pressure because they're probably being told that you need to make a song a dj or a zine or something will put up there and it has to have a certain amount of hooks or this is like yes the music should sound good and it should be something people want to have repeat list to but don't worry so much about a dance beat just kind of follow your own vision and see where it goes and just kind of tweak it as you need to as far as the trends goes trends change all the time and they go in circles so you really can't worry about that yeah i i no i i, I agree I, you know i think it's um I, well, I, I mean, I wouldn't even know uh, how, how to sort of follow a trend, so it's just kind of... Yeah, well, you know, it's like there was a DJ, Martin Oldgoth, who's the famous DJ from England, and I remember one time he'd put up on Facebook, and I was dying laughing, because he finally had enough, and him and William Faith and a few other big wigs were saying, like, if we don't mind you sending band demos to us, but for the love of God, please do something original of it starts off like a sister's copy or something then we're just going to straight up delete it <laughs> yeah 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 it's definitely definitely been too much of that um, yeah a friend of mine once told me after a while that sounds like they're trying to gargle mashed potatoes while they're singing which is probably the funniest description i've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh yeah well i mean we 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 finally did it, you know. <laughs> so. Uh, oh yeah, I've been looking forward to it. It's. Yeah, um, yeah. Everybody's been through a lot, and me. After what I went through, I never thought I'd be sitting here at a computer, you know, having a stiff drink and talking to a friend online and discussing music and having people I care about that are hosting the show, like Sean, who's a good friend of mine, and he's been there DJing with me many times. So thanks, Sean. And yeah. so, yeah, it's it's a, it's a big day for me. It's like, well, it's just on a computer. Well, it's a big day because of all the factors involved in the context. So that's what makes me appreciate it. Well, Chris, I'm, I, I'm you know, I'm, I'm glad that I could, you know, sure, this is maybe, this is like a baby step, you could call it. But, you know, it's, it's but I, I, I'm, I'm glad to be, I'm glad to be part of it, man, because I, I, I am glad that you're, you know, in the, uh, back in the land of the living and yeah uh, it's uh you know. connecticut where i was at is not the land of the living it's land of the super uptight and ultra conservative mm. oh my god it's mm. like a reagan wet dream so um yeah i'm definitely glad to be out of there um it, it's just it, it is kind of strange in that area in new england uh, massachusetts has a lot of goth nights new york is famous for sean templar jason ledyard um, all those events that were going on there for years, but yeah, I'm definitely glad to be home. I've got actually, you know what I've got on? I've got a Summon uh, t-shirt on because I like it. I've actually never been to Summon, but uh, in New York, but uh, but one of their DJs was always has always been kind of supportive of our stuff, and uh, uh, I, they came out with a shirt and it looks looks really cool. So I'm just like, okay. yeah, that. <laughs> That scene is pretty awesome. I say represent if you can. Um, Sean Templar's events at the Red Party. I've been to it many times. Mm. It's a lot of fun. Um, also going to some of the nights at the Pyramid Club, my friend Alex Von Nile, may he rest in peace, used to do one of the nights there as well. And um, yeah, they're popping. I mean, they've got some amazing bands. I mean, you got Boot Blacks here from around there, I think mm -hmm. Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And all their music is great. I've seen them live and they're fantastic live. Nice nice yeah and uh i saw ritual howls there too that was an awesome show i always want to see ritual howls that was one of the highlights of my year yeah they're they're a band i'd like to see um so uh should we guys yeah should we should we bounce over to uh to sean yeah it's about time i know sean can kill it um hell yeah. i dance to his sets <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, so you know what I'm going to do, uh, guys, I appreciate everyone uh, for hanging out with us, and um, I'm going to rate us over to um, Sean's channel, uh, and uh, he's already got a broadcast in progress, um, the, the Sisters of Monday, and, uh, but shortly after we get there, um, we're going to, uh, he, he's going to uh, play the new video. 
Um, and uh, yeah. Oh yeah, shout out. I just got to send a shout out to my mom. I'm just being told I got to say hi to my mom. So hi mom, she's watching. Okay. So um, <laughs> anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the link here. Um, there's, um, there's the link, but don't click it. I am going to rate us over and we should all get bounced over. The link is just in case that doesn't work. So, okay. uh, and I, I, do have a, I do have a Twitch profile under Briconos, so I'll be on there watching what's going on and talking with you and other people. Nice, so, nice. Party. Party. Okay, <laughs> okay, so see you, see you soon. And uh, we are now raiding. Okay. Um, and now we're going to raid and... S yeah, and we should be there in a minute. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right.